wipe your page. I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the ones take it off you. Warum? Just how interventionist should a head of department be? Not very, is the view of head of maths, Richard Phillips. Richard came into teaching as a mature student after six years as a naval rating, working as a weapons engineer. He's now in his fourth year as head of maths at King's High School in Bournemouth, where he's about to observe Mark Kaplan, a former university and adult education lecturer who's halfway through his induction year as an NQT. John Bailey's overseeing the process. Moving from higher education, one of Mark's challenges is teaching in a way that will engage children rather than adults. Mark's about to revisit modes, medians and means with his middle set year nine class. The target is for each child to make progress in their learning. Um, Mark joined us in September as a uh, as an NQT, and uh, he's very good planning wise, very thorough planning wise, because um, it's you know alleviates any of the problems that can arise if you're not. Three fifths of forty five. Anyone? Fifteen. Fifteen. Divide that by five, guys. Forty five divided by five gives you nine. Multiply by three twenty seven. Half of eighteen. Nice easy one. Good. Three fifths of fifteen. Three Anton, nine. nine, good. I enjoyed the starter. Um, matter of fact, I wish he spent more time on it because they were, I could see that it was something they could do mm. and they were being kind of successful. Two quarters of 28. Two quarters of 28, same as a half of 28. Russia. Thank you. <laughs> if you were teaching that lesson, the dreaded modes, medians and, and um, means, um, what sort of things might you do at the beginning to wake, um, who's this child over here? Adam, wasn't it? Adam, um, yeah. What sort of thing would you do to get Adam interested in it at the beginning of the lesson and make him think he's going to hear something worthwhile? Well, doing a lesson plan in my head, no, seriously. <laughs> I'd probably, um, I'd maybe have something on the, <clears throat> on the topical, you know, football scores, you know, which, which was the mode score for the number of goals this week, or the number of pets, the number of, you know, whatever to do that. Um, we could have taken shoe sizes, which is a little bit boring, but it usually would give us a median. You know, something where they can straight away get involved in a lesson. Um, I think a start is important just to get them engaged, to get them in, you know, straight away, right, my brain's working, what am I going to be doing? And then from that is then, like you say, it's developing it in such a way that you want to get across the teaching points. Now, what's prompted this lesson today is the fact that in your SATS tests last week, one person got this right. OK? So I wanted to go back over it because I think it is a fundamental thing that we need to cover and make sure that all of you understand and are really fully aware... Torrin. Vince, please. <laughs> ..are really quite aware of what you need to be doing. What we've got, guys, is a mixture of mode, median, mean and range. Hence the reason why some of you had problems last week in the test, which is why I'm going to try and really explain it so that you can remember <coughs> exactly how to calculate each one and what each one stands for when you do it in the future. So I've just written down a definition of mode and median. There's a lot of words there, but I just want you to remember, what I've put there is the mode is the number that occurs the most often. So what I've done is I've gone for the O, and I'm hoping this will help you remember what the mode is. So the mode, M-O, is the number that occurs the most often, O. They're staying put. He's the one who's moving around and doing most of the talking. Yeah. This is one kind of lesson. Yeah. Um, and then there's potentially another kind of lesson where um, children are working in groups, they're engaging, you know, if you're smart at maths and I'm not so smart at maths, which yeah. is almost certainly the truth, <laughs> um, I'm learning a bit about what you know, you're cementing your knowledge yeah. by explaining it to me and asking children to make predictions so that you're... Um, What's the word I want? You're putting, a bit, yeah, you're putting engagement. You're putting a bit of jeopardy in the lesson. You know, I'm a great believer in what you've basically, to me, described, which is you know getting them up, touching the board, giving their answers, why they've done it, give them a pen, show how they've done it, how did you do it differently, 
you know, so it, in that respect, I think there is a, a lot more scope that he could get to for actually being more kin kinesthetic, as you say, and a bit more visual on the board type thing. And the median? It can be a, a little bit time-consuming if you don't right, manage it well. I was it was the other averages. But the median is the other way of representing the data, finding the average, is the middle number, when we've got them in order. When we've got them in order. So, when we get a set of data, what we need to do is we actually need to put it in order and then look for the one in the middle. When we did this before, what we actually did was cross off numbers at each end until we ended up with one in the middle. That left us with two complications, which we'll cover in a second. First of all, with the mode, you don't always have one mode. And that's something that you need to remember. You may find sets of data where you actually have more than one mode. Any questions, guys? Because this is really about A, trying to remember it, and then B, we'll go on and actually apply it. You and I might not be terribly interested in the difference between a median and a mode. We might not think it's the most no. burning question on the planet. Um, but something happens when, um, I don't know, when we have to do a sort or arrange some tokens or make a bet on it, or our team has to get the answer first, mm. um, that level of engagement goes up. And it's probably only worthwhile doing if it increases retention as well. Yeah. Why do you think that works? Putting real-life situations on, on things for kids to think about, they've had to put themselves into that situation, perhaps. Yeah. One thing I would say, quite a few tests, people actually write down the range as being 7 through to 17 or 17 minus 7. It's not. The range is equal to the numerical value which you get when you take away one from the other. Maybe it's because they've put themselves into the situation that you've asked them to. And, and because of that, they thought it through, which means that I would hope they'd be more likely to retain it. I think that's right. And, and the other thing I suppose we should remind ourselves of is just different learning styles. Mm. And the, the most, what I'm really trying to do is get over to you is there's three averages and to try and remember which one is which. Now, the way I do it is mode often median, middle with the I, and then the mean is the one that's left over, which is all the data divided by the number of values. That's how I've always remembered it. Whether you can do the same or not, I don't know. Yeah? Try it. For some of us, just sitting and staring at a bunch of numbers on a board mm. doesn't hit any buttons. Quick test. Louise, what's the mode? The number that occurs most often. Adam, mode? The number that occurs most often. Good. So he, like all starter classroom teachers, he's got a long way to go, hasn't he, um, to get all these things in, in place. Um, I think most of it's experience, though. That's something that you pick up in your own personal style, personally, I think. That's my own opinion. And, and so if you're willing to go that extra mile to, to find new ways of doing things or making it more interesting and ultimately making your job easier, I think, then you'll do that. But if you're not, then, then maybe you won't. What are your main targets and going to be in that feedback? Um, excuse me, I'd like, to, I'd like Mark to to feed back himself almost. I'd like to be a bit of a bystander with giving him things to think about and then him approach it himself. I'd like him to, um, you know, be honest, obviously, as I'm sure he will be. You know, not be told, no, Mark, do it like this. Don't do it like that, do it like this. If you had to teach that again, Mark, what could you do slightly differently? How could you engage the kids more? You know, what could you do to make sure that you'd made every single kid feel like that they're the most important one in that classroom. How can you assess it better so that you know you, you can see progression and you know it's it's there. You know you're not just oh well I've taught it so they must have progressed. I think he needs to you know go away and at times and have a good think about you know how could he do this slightly differently like I did, and um, maybe just stick his neck out and have a go at doing something that's a bit out of the ordinary just to see if it works. And so the interesting question is. What's your role in getting him from, from yeah, there to that. here? It's a difficult one. It is, because, uh, like I say, I, I hope, I hope to God that it's not that I'm a control freak, because I don't believe I am, but I just find it so difficult to say, can I just ask you to do that? The challenge for Richard 
is how interventionist he should be as a manager. John's interested to see how far he'll go in guiding Mark's progress. Hi, right, sir. All right, how are you? Thank you. Very well, thank you. So what do you think went well for the pupils? How do you think they saw the lesson? Um, <clears throat> I think that you've got to make lessons almost into mini events for them, where they really do see something happen, see a purpose, see an end, full stop, off they go. Yeah. You know? and, and I think that that's, that's almost the entertainment factor of the lesson. So did you find any, in, in that particular lesson, did you find any that you thought you, you know, were struggling more than others, or did you feel you sort of covered the lesson well in the Try fact of te get, teaching to each individual? Tried to. By well, having the extension, I thought that that would push one or two of them, because yeah. I found one or two of those questions hard myself. I was doing yeah. them on Sunday night, you know, so yeah. I thought if they could get through those and, that, and those, they really are doing well. Then five, and then six and seven. So what would you be your success criteria? How would you rate that so that you knew that they knew? If I could go back into that classroom and five children, when I asked, what is mode, immediately put their hands up and said, often. Yeah. What is medium, <clears throat> middle, without even thinking about it. I know I'm asking you to think on your feet a bit, but how could you do each part maybe to make it slightly different approach? So in other words, how, for instance, could you do that so that it, you know, you got kids out of the seat, say, oh, or I... you got them talking to each other, or... I could have taken the, the, the age of the children themselves, get them to stand up yeah. and show them how you've got a group of children that are all 13 years old, mate, one of the one or two 14 year olds, and then put me in and you in, yeah. and all of a sudden <laughs> you've got. Big difference. <laughs> you know, you've got, the mode will stay the same, yeah, the medium will stay the same, but the means are going to change. Is there anything you want to ask, or is there anything perhaps you thought about? Did you think, did you think, do you think the children learned in that lesson? Yeah, I th they certainly. Um, displayed and demonstrated what they were doing. Yeah. I like the fact that you were reinforcing it so that, you know, you, although they, it was repetitive, they were having to reinforce by being repetitive. Yeah. Um, you know, it seemed a nice atmosphere. They seemed to be working. Yeah. yeah, I mean... I mean, without actually going around every kid and understanding it, it sometimes it, it... I mean, I'm not sure how to get that feel sometimes as to whether a child is really taking it on board enough to understand it and apply it. You know, quick fire sort of questions that you can ask individually. I right. think that's quite a good way of getting a feel for it. Right. But without without copying out, I think that's something you'll just develop yourself. You sort of get that feel on whether, you know, quite often you can be wrong, yeah. but I just think you get that feel for whether you feel they really have, you know, grasped it or not. I mean, until the crux comes that they're actually tested, you can't always tell. Yeah. But um, I think, you know, that's something you'll find the more and more you do it, the more and more experience you'll get to, to feeling whether you think you know or not. And then obviously you'll find one way or the other whether you're right or not. OK. Right. I enjoyed that. I, I really liked the way you drew him out with questioning. And he responded to it quite well, didn't he? Yeah, I did think he responded well. I've always been able to look at myself and see my pitfalls. And, and I know I've got lots of them, but, you know, I, I think that's important that you, you look at yourself and think, yeah, I could have done this, I could have done that, and evaluate what you've done rather than just, well, you know, pregnant silence and then sort of expect to be told yeah. what to do.